Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another horrible case with you. In July 2016, a British Pakistani girl named Samia Shaheed travels from England to Pakistan to visit her family. However, on July 20th, Samia tells her husband in Dubai that she has a flight from Pakistan the next day and hopes everything will be fine. But on July 21st, Samia does not reach Dubai. Instead, her husband receives news of her death. There's a long story behind this incident, which we need to understand from the beginning. In today's video, we will cover Samia Shaheed's murder case. Samia Shaheed was born in 1987 in Bradford, West Yorkshire, UK. It's worth mentioning that the city of Bradford is also known as the wool capital of the world. Samia was the eldest daughter in a Pakistani family and was known for being cheerful, bubbly and always smiling. She was quite popular among children her age and a bit stubborn due to her parents' love and affection. After completing her studies at Nab Wood School, Samia did various small jobs. She had a passion for makeup, clothes and fashion. Samia had a good relationship with her family and was especially her father's favorite. Her father, Muhammad Shaheed, fulfilled her every wish. Samia's family was well known in the city of Bradford and her father had a business dealing with cars and limousines. Although Samia's father was originally from a small village called Pandori in the Jhelum district of Pakistan, after moving to the UK, he told Samia and her younger sister, Madiha Shaheed, that even though they had shifted to the UK, they should never forget their country and religion. In 2011, a marriage proposal for Samia came from her paternal aunt's son, Shadri Muhammad Shakil, who lived in Pakistan. At that time, Samia was 24 years old. However, Samia asked her family for some time to think about it and told her father that she wanted to meet Shakil before getting married. Her father agreed and Samia booked a ticket to Pakistan. Samia stayed in Pakistan for about a month during which she and Shaquille got to know each other well. However, during this time, Samia discovered that Shaquille had shot a man over a land dispute some time ago. Although the man did not die, he was seriously injured, and Shaquille had been released from jail only a short time before. This news made Samia very worried, and she shared her concerns with her friends after returning to the UK. Surprisingly, Samia's father was also aware of this incident, but still considered Shaquille to be the perfect groom for Samia. Samia knew that her father was happy with this relationship and she didn't want to disappoint him, so she agreed to the marriage. However, during this time, she used to share every detail of her life with a few close friends. She even wrote a message to one friend saying, I'm dying, I swear, my life's a joke. It was clear that Samia was very sad at that time, but there was nothing she could do. Her marriage to Shaquille had already been arranged. To forget her sorrow, Samia immersed herself in the wedding preparations. All the shopping for her wedding was done in England, and the clothes and jewelry were bought from a store called Pakistani Bazaar. On February 18, 2012, Samia left for Pakistan with her family and relatives. Then, on February 27, 2012, Samia and Shaquille got married, with over a thousand guests attending the wedding. As a gift, Muhammad Shaheed bought Shaquille a house next to his own in Pandori village. Immediately after the wedding, Samia and Shaquille moved into their new home. A few days after the wedding, Samia's family returned to the UK, while Samia stayed in Pakistan with Shaquille for four months. Samia wasn't feeling happy in Pakistan, so she told Shaquille that she would go to the UK and apply for a visa for him. She said that once he got the visa, he could come to Bradford and they could live together there. Shaquille agreed to this plan, and on June 12, 2012, Samia returned to the UK. As soon as she arrived in Bradford, she filled out Shaquille's visa application form and started working at a post office. Although Shaquille's immigration process was taking time, he was keeping a close watch on Samia's every move from Pakistan. He called her several times a day. However, Samia didn't like Shaquille's behavior, she told her friends that she felt trapped in the marriage with Shaquille and that she was becoming depressed. Despite this, Samia went back to Pakistan to be with her husband in December 2012. 
She spent six months there, but Shaquille's behavior did not improve, so she returned to the UK in June 2013. By October 2013, Samaya's friends noticed that she was starting to smile again. She soon revealed the reason for her happiness to some close friends. One night, while having dinner with friends at a restaurant in London, she met Syed Mukhtar Kazim. Kazim also had dual citizenship in Britain and Pakistan and had come to London for a while. While living in Dubai, he worked there as a fashion photographer. Since Samia was also interested in fashion, they had a lot to talk about during their first meeting. They exchanged contact information, and as long as Kazim was in England, he met Samia several times. However, when Kazim went back to Dubai, they started chatting online, and their friendship quickly turned into love. However, there were two major obstacles between them. Kazim was a Shia Muslim, and Samia was Sunni, and the other issue was that Samia was already married. Additionally, at the beginning of 2014, an incident occurred that changed the lives of Shaquille, Samia, and Kazim forever. Shaquille's visa application was rejected, and now he couldn't come to England. Samia knew that she would have to move to Pakistan under family pressure, but she didn't want to go to Pakistan. She didn't even want to stay with Shaquille anymore, so one day Samia called Shaquille and said, It seems that luck is not on our side. You can't come to England, and I can't stay in Pakistan. Therefore, it would be better if we both get a divorce. But Shaquille refused to divorce Samia. After this, Samia made a very significant decision in her life, and in May 2014, she talked to the imam of a mosque near her home. Samia said, I have heard that in Islam, forced marriages are not allowed, and the consent of both the boy and girl is necessary for marriage. Based on this, my marriage happened against my will. Please help me. After listening to Samia, the imam thought of discussing the matter with Shaquille, but he could not make contact. Then, the imam prepared the divorce papers and gave them to Samia, telling her that she was now free from this relationship. However, the noteworthy point here is that Samia did not let anyone in her family know about this and started a new life with Kazim. Four months later, Samia and Kazim got married in front of the same imam, and Samia was very happy about this. But shortly after the wedding, Kazim went back to Dubai for work, while Samia, staying at her father's house, began preparing to move to Dubai. Until then, Samia thought that her family was still unaware of her second marriage, but this was a major misunderstanding on her part. Somehow, Samia's family found out about Kazim, leading to two major incidents. One day, while Samia was returning home from work at night, an unknown man attacked her in a deserted alley. The man attacked Samia's legs with an iron rod and then fled. However, a passerby noticed Samia's condition and quickly called an ambulance. The police thoroughly investigated the case but couldn't find the culprit. Afterward, the imam who had arranged Samia's divorce papers and officiated her marriage started receiving phone threats from Samia's family. When Samia recovered and returned home from the hospital, she had many conflicts with her family. At one point, her mother, Imtiaz Bibi, even threw all her belongings out on the street. Additionally, Samia's family began calling Kazim, threatening him to leave their daughter alone and declaring they did not recognize their marriage. Because Samia's family was against her, living in her own home became very difficult. This is why, when Samia received a visa for Dubai in May 2015, she immediately took a flight and went to Kazim. In Dubai, she started working for a property management company. During this time, she stayed in contact with some friends and sent them beautiful pictures of Dubai. However, she was unhappy about the broken relationship with her family. Since Samia loved her father dearly, she sometimes felt she might have made a mistake by marrying Kazim. Because of this, Samia often sent apology messages to her father, and her sister Madiha would respond to her messages. In addition, Samia's mother used to talk to her several times, but Samia's father did not answer her calls. One day, Samia thought that enough time had passed, and if she talked to her father once and apologized, he might forgive her. After this, Samia went to London again. Her mother welcomed her at the airport, and when Samia reached home, all the family members were present, and Samia hugged them and started crying. But shortly after, Samia's family told her, 
it wasn't right of you to leave Shaquille. Because of this, we have been disgraced among all our relatives. It would be better if you leave Kazim. Hearing this, Samia's heart broke, and that night she sent a text message to her husband, Kazim, which read, The parents that I cried for while I was away are mine no more. My kids will never see them, never hear them. I'm broken. My only pride is you, and you alone. After this, Samia returned to Dubai, but ten months later, in June 2016, Samia received sad news from Pakistan. Her ex-husband, Shaquille's mother, had passed away. She was not only Samia's mother-in-law, but also her paternal aunt, and she loved Samia very much. At that moment, Samia thought about going to Pakistan to attend her aunt's funeral, but after talking with Kazim, she decided to stay. Actually, after breaking the marriage bond with Shaquille and marrying a boy from another branch, the people in her village in Pakistan were quite disappointed. The people in Samia's village were conservative, bound by their own customs, and could do anything for the sake of honor. After this, in July 2016, Samia's mother and sister called her and told her that her father's health had deteriorated significantly. Due to diabetes complications, his condition was getting worse day by day. Now, even though the relationship between the father and daughter was not good, Samia loved her father very much, so she decided to go to Pakistan to see him. But Kazim was refusing because he thought that calling Samia to Pakistan was just a ploy by her family. However, Samia did not listen to her husband at all because she believed that her sister and mother could not tell such a big lie. Samia said that she wanted to meet her father one last time. After that, Samia's sister booked a ticket for her, and then on July 14, 2016, Samia boarded the flight and texted a friend, Pray that I return alive. After reaching Pakistan, Samia spent her first day at a friend's house, and the next day she went to see her father. During this time, Samia texted Kazim to inform him that she had met her father and that he was feeling better now. On July 18th, Samia went to place flowers on her aunt's grave, and on July 20th, she bought food from a restaurant for all her family members. She ordered her father's favorite burger especially for him. That night, Samia texted Kazim saying, I have a flight tomorrow, hope everything will be fine. Shortly after sending the text message, Muhammad Shahid, Samia's father, calls the Pandori police station in a panicked state, saying that his daughter had passed away. Police then went to Shaquille's home, where they found 28-year-old Samia's body near the staircase of the house. Samia's face was covered with a scarf, and when the police removed it, they saw something white thing coming out of her mouth. Furthermore, Shaquille was not at home, and no one knew where he was. When the police questioned Muhammad Shahid later, he explained that he had come to meet his daughter by coincidence, but found Samia in that condition. Subsequently, a forensic team was called to collect crucial evidence, and Samia's body was sent for post-mortem. However, what was very strange was that immediately after hearing about Samia's death, her mother and sister both caught a flight to London and left Pakistan. After Samia's death, false rumors began to spread everywhere. Apparently, one of Samaya's cousins called Kazim and told him that Samaya had died due to a heart attack. Additionally, local media and newspapers wrote that Samia had committed suicide, and in her village, rumors circulated that she had died from falling downstairs. Some believed it was a case of honor killing, including Kazim, who thought Samia's family had called her to Pakistan and killed her to protect their honor. However, during this time, Another strange thing happened. Samia's uncle obtained her death certificate by paying extra money and informed the police that Samia's death was natural. Upon seeing the death certificate, the police handed over Samia's body to her family. After that, Samia's family wasted no time in burying her. When Kazim arrived in Pakistan, he found out that Samia had already been buried in a cemetery near her home a long time ago. When Kazim spoke to the police officers, one of them informed him that no investigation was needed because there were no signs of injury on Samia's body. But Kazim still believed that Samia had been murdered, which prompted him to raise his voice again and brought the case to the attention of Bradford members of Parliament Naz Shah. After this, MP Naz wrote a letter to a Pakistani politicians and contacted the Pakistani High Commissioner. MP Naz believed that the truth was being concealed in this case 
as attempts were being made to suppress the murder case by influencing the police and the medical examiner because they had taken bribes. A few days later, when Kazim received Samia's post-mortem report, the details shocked him. The post-mortem report stated that there was a 19-centimeter long wound on Samia's neck. Additionally, the portion of the report detailing the cause of death mentioned that Samia died due to asphyxiation. Later forensic examination also confirmed that Samia had been raped before her death. Following these new revelations, the Chief Minister of Punjab, Pakistan, mentioned investigating the case again. Immediately after this, the lead police investigator, Akhil Abbas, was suspended because it was later revealed that this officer had granted permission for Samia's mother and sister to travel to England. Furthermore, Samia's uncle was arrested for falsifying the post-mortem report. Subsequently, the police also found Shaquille, and then Samia's father, Muhammad Shahid, was also arrested. On August 14, 2016, Shaquille confessed to his crime. Shaquille explained that when Samia returned to Pakistan, he had asked her to stay in Pakistan. According to Shaquille, he had not yet divorced Samia and did not accept her marriage to Kazim. A day before Samia's flight, Shaquille asked her for her passport and ticket, but when Samia refused, he attacked her. However, after the assault, Samia successfully escaped from the room and while fleeing threatened Shaquille that she would file a case against him in England. Hearing this, Shaquille became afraid and contemplated killing Samia. Subsequently, Shaquille pressed Samia's neck with her scarf, during which Samia's father, Muhammad, held her legs to prevent her from escaping. Surprisingly, despite being in police custody for six months, Muhammad was released on bail. In January 2018, due to kidney failure, Muhammad Shaheed died at the age of 52 in a hospital in Lahore. Subsequently, in September 2018, Shaquille was also released on bail, and to date, no official sentence has been issued by the court against Shaquille. However, it is hoped that the court will impose a severe punishment on Shaquille. So far, no official statement has been issued by the court, and there is no information available on the internet about this. Nevertheless, we will keep an eye on this case, and whenever there is an update, we will share it with you through David True Crime Channel's community post. Anyway. Samia did not commit any crime by marrying of her own free will, but due to some people, a beautiful, intelligent, and hardworking girl lost her life. So with that, the Samia Shaheed murder case comes to an end right here. Friends, before moving forward in the video, I have a small request for you. I want to let you know that behind the David True Crime channel, there is a team of five people who work hard to bring you the best quality content through thorough research. If you appreciate our efforts, you can support us according to your preference by visiting the link provided in the description. Your small support will motivate us to work effectively on the channel. Thank you. Now, let's continue with the story. Additionally, if you want to recommend any case for us to make a detailed video on, you can write the name of that case in the comment section. If you appreciate our efforts, like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Thank you.